Hello and welcome back to my channel and we're just going to have a quick look at my smallish Hitchcock collection. Starting off with the Hitchcock, the early Hitchcock collection from Studio Canal. This is a series of um, nine films I think. Four Silent and Five Talkies. So you've got The Ring from 1928, Champagne from 1928, the Farmer's Wife from 1929 and The Manx Man from 1930. And Talkies is Blackmail from 29, Murder from 1930, The Skin Game from 31, Rich and Strange 32 and number 17 from 32. Let's just have a, a quick shifty through. The Ring. I've not watched this one all the way through yet. There's a few on here that I've still not seen. Um, said to be one of the finest Hitchcock silent films. Uh, this one was also written by the director and Alma Revel as well. From what I've seen of it, it looks pretty good. It's, it's pretty good pacing as per most of his previous films were from stage plays and so they had that quite stagey pacing to them. Next up Champagne another one that I haven't seen yet hopefully it will be a good one um, again these come in really thin cases uh, which is excellent takes up less space and the farmer's wife uh, which uh, after the ring he's returned to stage play uh, I think I've seen this one but I can't remember very much about it um, or maybe I didn't watch it all the way through The Manx Man Hitchcock's final silent film again I'm um, oops I thought I had, or I've probably seen part of that, but yeah, some of these early ones I really need to catch up on. And then we're into the talkies, and of course, probably one of his most famous, Blackmail. Uh, a great film, oh, and in with this one is the booklet for the set. Um, a little bit about each film. Some music to the scorings for the films and a couple of essays there um, obviously this quintessential Hitchcock uh, after The Lodger this was the second sort of film in the Hitchcock tradition very good Murder which is adapted by the stage play End of Sir John uh, this is not a bad film actually um, Considering it was uh, a stage play, it's, it's been opened out and well worth a watch that one, I would say. The Skin Game. Um, I've not seen this one. Um, quite surprised how many of these I haven't actually uh, seen, but I'll look forward to catching up on those. Rich and Strange which is said to be his most personal film. It's um, allegedly inspired by Hitchcock's honeymoon with Alma Revel. Uh, a married couple go on a world cruise to escape their humdrum lives. Um, I've heard sort of odd things about this one, so I will catch up with that eventually. And the last of the talkies for this set is number 17. Um, this was adapted from another stage play and from the beginning you can tell it, it is very stagey. There is a, an impressive chase sequence at the end, unfortunately all done with models. Um, not brilliant but well worth a watch. It's just a bit odd at the beginning where people sort of turn up to this house unannounced and you know no one seems to be phased by it. Um, but it's definitely a collection worth seeking out if you can. And 
I really must catch up on some of those that I haven't seen yet. Another box set now, this one from Network, Hitchcock the British Years. This is again a few silent and a few sound films. Uh, the Pleasure Garden, which I think was his first one, or the earliest one that's still available. The Lodger, which unfortunately doesn't have a score on it. It's, it's a bit odd. Downhill, which is another silent, and then the rest, as far as I am aware, are all talkies. The Man Who Knew Too Much, 39 Steps, Secret Agent, Sabotage, Young and Innocent, Lady Vanishes and Jamaica Inn. So let's just have a quick look at what we've got here then. Let's do it the other way around. Start at the beginning. Pleasure Garden and the Lodger. Two good films. Uh, and there's a, a booklet about what we've got in the set. Again, network don't seem to have a, the cases where you can put the, the books in properly. Uh, Pleasure Garden is uh, very good. Well worth watching. The Lodger, everyone should know about. Cracking film. It just, I don't know why it hasn't got a score and it's really annoying. Um, Ivan Novello plays the mysterious lodger. Is he a Jack the Ripper type killer or is he just someone out to find it? Very good film and I think this is the first one where Hitchcock makes a cameo. Downhill and The Man Who Knew Too Much. Um, just watched Downhill the other day. Um, sort of a sixth form schoolboy expelled in disgrace after being suspected of the theft is sent to Marseille where his antics get from bad to worse but he is of course innocent um, it's not a bad film um, you can't really see Ivan Novello as a sixth form schoolboy but there you go and the man who knew too much um, very good spy thriller with um, Peter Laurie I think in his first British role I much prefer this to the, the remake with Doris Day, I must say. And at 39 Steps and Secret Agent. Two classic British films. Um, 39 Steps, the template really for most of Hitchcock's films that follow. Innocent Man on the Run. Um, just a crack of it, you've got to see it. The best of the three versions out there. Um, four if you count that TV thing with what's his name in. The Secret Agent is another good film. I really enjoyed that one. Another sort of spy thriller set in, starts off in Switzerland. Um, I think that is from a, yeah, a story by Somerset Maugham. Um, the title of which caused a bit of a problem for his later film which was Sabotage and then Young and Innocent Sabotage is actually from the Joseph Conrad novel The Secret Agent so obviously they had to change the name for that having already had one called The Secret Agent very good film very tense well worth a watch and then Young and Innocent one of my favourite is Cox the uh, the transfer on that one not particularly good. And then last in this box set, the lady vanishes and Jamaica in. Well, the lady vanishes, really good spy thriller. Um, from a book by a lady called Ethel Lynn White. Um, I think it's called The Wheels Turn or something. I've read it. It's not bad. Um, but Hitchcock and his screenwriter took it to another level. They introduced two comedy characters, Charters and Caldecott, who are very much obsessed with cricket. And it's just a cracking spy film with a, a Hitchcock MacGuffin. And the last one in the set is Jamaica. Now, I took 
ages and ages to watch this. I, I really wasn't that interested in it. And it really is basically a, a vehicle for uh, Charles Lawton to overact. And my God, does he ha slice the ham thickly in this one. Um, and I think probably Hitchcock just took it on uh, contractual obligations so he could finish up and then bugger off to America before the war started. And that's all the DVDs, now we're on to Blu-rays and this one also appears in another video of mine about the British film from Network. Young and Innocent, as I said previously, one of my favourites. This is a brilliant transfer taken from the original film Elements. All the special features are exactly the same as on the British Years box set. Um, if you've not seen this one, check it out. I really enjoy it. It's a great fun film. What are you doing there? We'll put you away for a minute. Let's get these in order. Uh, 50th anniversary edition of North by Northwest. What can you say? Quintessential Hitchcock. Cary Grant. A great comedy thriller. Um, just can't be beaten really. For an evening's entertainment. You need to check it out if you've never seen it. And possibly my favourite Hitchcock, Vertigo. I love this film. It's complex. It's dark. It's... Yeah, you really, really need to see this if you've not seen it. Um, Fantastic. Pity the uh, cover artwork wasn't a bit better actually, it's, that's a bit poor. But a film well worth checking out. And on to a steelbook of probably his most famous film, Psycho. This is a great addition. Nice booklet. Nicely illustrated. And this universal release is a very very good release and it for a film that's 50 years old when they've remastered this the 5.1 surround on it is fantastic considering that it would have been a mono track to begin with they've done it so well it's not obvious that it was never um, filmed in that way some old films that they put a 5.1 surround track on it just doesn't feel right it doesn't sound right um, it, it's, it seems a bit too stagey but this is really good and the, the rain effects in it are fantastic it really, it's subtle but very good and of course you don't need to say anything about this film if you haven't seen it why not great movie And another 50th anniversary, this one with a slipcase, Hitchcock's Birds. Not a booklet, just a card. Um, I enjoy the birds. I remember seeing it on TV and everyone talking about it the next day in school. Um, my father, most displeased with the ending. <laughs> Didn't know what was going on there. A cracking film. I watched this with my son the other day and I asked him if he enjoyed it and he said he wasn't quite sure what he was watching. So there you go. And although not a Hitchcock film, it is about, it is called Hitchcock and it's a, a sort of making of Psycho itself. Um, this got really mixed reviews, a lot of people hated on it. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think it's a good Good film. Um, Helen Mirren, what can you say? Brilliant. Anthony Hopkins, very good. And all the supporting cast. Might not be the best film in the world, but I enjoyed it. And that's all my Hitchcock collection. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, if you liked it, please hit that 
like button and I'll see you later.